What if I told you there was a way that games add infinite detail without using a single polygon? You'd probably say I'm crazy. Well, I am. So let's embrace this madness together and learn about texture maps on the next episode of Stylized Station. Have you ever wondered how video game characters have such detailed skin textures like wrinkles and pores nowadays? Bump maps operate on grayscale values, where white indicates areas that should protrude, go up, and black suggests areas that should recede. Despite being one of the older texture mapping methods, it's still widely used to create illusions of depth and texture. By interpreting these values, 3D software crafts the illusion of complex surface details on a flat model, all without altering its actual geometry. You don't get it yet? That's okay, I don't either. Picture your favorite game character. Those minute details on their skin, from the subtle wrinkles to the smallest pores. Those are all the magic of bump mapping at work. What an ingenious way to add realism to a game without overloading it with complex models. But like all things, bump mapping isn't perfect. It can sometimes look less convincing when viewed from certain angles, as it does and alter the actual Hey there, it's your editor Thomas just checking in. I trust you're finding this episode insightful and not too unhinged. For a moment, I'd like to speak directly to my fellow game artists. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know it's one of my lifelong goals with this platform to show the world that game art shouldn't be some exclusive club. This is why we've taken on the mission of scouring the world for the best artists and teachers and creating a well-organized library of game art courses for people just like us. So far, we have three full-length courses up and running, and I'm determined to add many, many more in the near future. So if you want to check out what we've made, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you keep creating, who knows, maybe we'll get to work on a course together someday. Now, let's get back to the episode. Who the f*** was that guy? Anyway, like bump maps, normal maps create the illusion of depth on the surface of a model, but they do so in a slightly different way. Instead of using grayscale values to provide up or down information, normal maps use RGB to provide information about the direction of the surface normals. What an upgrade. In a normal map, each pixel's RGB value responds to the X, Y, and Z coordinates of a surface normal, a vector that is perpendicular to the surface at that point. This allows the 3D software to calculate how light should reflect off the surface, creating a more convincing illusion of depth and detail. Take that, bump maps. However, like bump maps, normal maps don't add actual resolution to the model. It's all a lie. Normal maps are often used to create the illusion of complex surface detail without significantly increasing the complexity of the model. They are the artist's secret to crafting textures that trick the eye. Ripples on the surface of water, the rustic rivets on a steampunk machine, the complex grain on a wooden table, or even the detailed stitching on a character's leather jacket. Normal maps are also crucial in environmental design, helping to render realistic textures on large structures like the brickwork in a decrepit building or the roughness of an asphalt road. Normal maps are the most popular type of texture map, and you can see them in every game that's ever existed past whatever, whenever Doom was made. Doom was the first one, I'm pretty sure. Doom was the first one. Displacement maps are the rebels of the texture map family. Why? Unlike bump map and normal maps, displacement maps don't create the illusion of depth. They're crazier than that. They cause an actual upheaval. They transform the very geometry of the model, creating real, tangible shapes and contours. They are the true architects in the realm of 3D textures. Similar to its siblings, displacement maps utilize grayscale values. However, they interpret this data differently because they're crazy, using it to calculate exactly how much each point on the model's surface should jut out or displace. Lighter values say step out more. Darker values whisper recede. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility, or in this case, more computational resources. But when would we need such power, you might ask? Think of footprints in the snow in a video game like Red Dead Redemption 2. But how does the game know to displace the snow exactly where your character steps, creating that perfect crispy footprint? Ah, my friend, that's a story for another day. So stay tuned for our next episode on Stylized Station is what an idiot would say. You know I wouldn't leave you on a cliffhanger like that. I've already made the next episode, and it's even longer than this one. Never say I don't do enough for my fans. It's available on Patreon right now. So I'll see you over there for the next episode of Stylized Station.